Alrighty guys, in today's video we're going to be working on the 1980 TX. This is like our little trail mod sled we're kind of building. I'm just kind of freshening it up, getting it going, um, and maybe rip it around on the ice or something. But uh, I got two parts for it. I needed a new pickup. Uh, I guess you, what do they call it? An outlet for the gas tank. I don't know, I call it a pickup tube adapter or something. Basically all it does is screw into the, your tank. You got barb fitting on this side, barb fitting on that side. One obviously sits in the tank. Also have the inline filter for the tank with a check valve. So basically what that does is it keeps fuel in the line, doesn't let it drain back in the tank. So then you always have fresh fuel um, when you pull the rope. Instead of having it take a few pulls to get fuel up there, it already has it in the line. So those are really nice. They cost a few bucks, but it's totally worth the investment. It's like eight bucks. And uh, basically, these parts, I got that. I got a clutch puller for the engine. Here's the engine out of that machine. And, hold on one second, guys. TX over there, the 1980. And I took the top end apart. Uh, I had 115 PSI when I took it apart. Had original pistons um, from 1980, so hopefully I'll just get the bores cleaned up, get a set of pistons and rings. I'm going to take the bottom end apart and reseal it. I got a full gasket set um, and crank seals. Got to get all that grime off the engine. I mean, this thing was just filthy. And then obviously I might, I mean, I might rebuild the fuel pump or buy a new one. I'll see how cheap they are because I don't know how good this fuel pump is going to be. Um, it doesn't look terrible, but you never know. It's so oily. I don't know if that was coming from the pump, the engine, stuff like that. But I also bought this Polaris clutch puller. Kind of threads in the end of the clutch. I'm going to try to get that on film for you guys, pulling the clutch off and see if it does come off. What I like to do is I pack a bunch of grease kind of on the end of this. And then you, you know, screw that in there with an impact and pa, she comes off. Um, hopefully that's how it goes. But I paid like 16 or $18 for the clutch puller and then the other miscellaneous parts. And it's all thanks to you guys. Um, basically the YouTube money we've been getting uh, has paid for all these parts. Um, so nothing came out of my pocket just from you guys watching the videos. It uh, helps pay for some of the stuff. So I think I spent like 100 bucks on stuff so far. And that's all thanks to you guys. So I really appreciate you watching the videos. You know, liking, sharing, commenting, all that stuff. Because it helps me when I want to make projects work and I don't have to spend so much money out of my pocket. So if we can keep gaining more subscribers, more views, the revenue is just going to keep going up. And it's already been up the last couple months here, which has been great. But I'd like to keep growing the channel. So please keep sharing our videos out to your friends. If you have more people that are interested in stuff that we work on, um, we'd love to have more people you know, watching our videos. So yeah, I bought all this stuff. eBay came through. Um, so yeah, I'm going to hook the camera up on the tripod and we'll pull this clutch off. Yeah, I put some grease on the end of the puller. I put some grease around the threads because I don't want it super dry when it goes in there. I'm going to lightly thread this one in just a ways until it gets tight. i got to build up my air compressor so that I have enough air pressure for the impact. But right there, it's kind of getting tight. So what I'm going to do is get my uh, compressor obviously built up. i got a 7A socket for the end of this on my impact. And hopefully it will just give her a few ugga duggas and she'll pop right off the taper. So turn the camera back on when I got my air compressor built up. Okay, air compressor built up. Uh, we'll try to see if we can get this thing off clear. I'm tightening. Let's see if she comes off. There she is. Unthread our puller. There it is. Worked pretty slick. See, I got the grease that kind of keeps it as like a barrier because you can't compress grease. So, just kind of gives you a little extra cushion at the end. And you won't mushroom the threads up in, uh, as much either. So, there we go. We got our Polaris cl clutch off. Um, this puller is good on like clutches from like 72 up to like 97. So, if you get one of these, I can leave a link in the description to that puller. If you guys have a Polaris clutch. Uh, it's like 17 or 18 dollars and that fits i mean a lot of polaris clutches so i'll leave a link for that um, we're gonna go ahead and i'll probably leave this video as one just pulling the clutch off um just showing you guys how to do that but i'm gonna make a new video about putting the uh inline fuel pickup in the tank of your snowmobile so that'll be a good video you guys make sure you watch that after you watch this video 
But yeah, this was pulling the clutch off. It's a pretty simple job. Like I said, use some grease on the threads if it's a new puller. It just helps lubricate everything up. You don't have to go and dry them. And then uh, grease at the end of the puller always helps. Can't go wrong with that. Came off pretty good. Sometimes they're a little uh, stubborn. This one here probably has been on there for a long time, but it still came off good, so I'm happy with that. Yeah, guys, that's going to be it for this quick little video. Make sure you guys stay tuned. We're going to have a few more sled videos coming. I'm um, building this project. Uh, I want to do a few other things to it yet. See what I can do about the cylinders, and we'll go from there. So we'll see you in the next video.